This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today we're using this water stream in order to show how a thermostatic expansion valve works, because on a heat pump or air conditioning system, you can't really visually see it. And so there's three pressures that are applied on a TXV to control the amount of liquid traveling through, and one is the TXV bulb, and that is an opening force pressing downwards, and then you have two closing forces. One is the external equalizer line, and that's pushing upwards, and you also have the spring pressure, and that's pushing upwards. So we're going to heat and cool this bulb to adjust the amount of liquid traveling through. So we're using our nitrogen pressure to add pressure into the external equalizer, and so this is the average pressure that you would have on this suction line. And then the spring pressure is already set by the factory, and so what we're going to do is put a ice pack on here onto this bulb, and you could do the same thing with a a cup with ice and water in it, and what you're going to see is the TXV is thinking, hey, we have less of a heat load, less uh, high temperature air crossing the coil. So maybe it's lower temperature air or less air, less of a heat load crossing the coil, and so you're going to see this water, the amount of water volume traveling through is going to lessen and lessen. And so once again, this bulb is the opening force for the thermostatic expansion valve, and if it senses a low temperature, it's going to allow less liquid through. Now we can rewarm the bulb back up just using the heat from my hand, and you're going to see it increase the amount of liquid traveling through. Now there's no electrical on this TXV. It's purely a pressure differential, and so there's a refrigerant charge within the bulb here and in this capillary tubing and at the head of the, the TXV, and then below the head there's a diaphragm separating this refrigerant charge from the refrigerant charge in the rest of the system. Now if I lower the temperature of the refrigerant that's inside the bulb, I'm going to lower the pressure. Anytime you lower pressure, temperature lowers. Anytime you lower temperature, pressure lowers. And so that's how saturated refrigerant works. Saturated means you have liquid and vapor refrigerant together. And what you can think of is that this little uh, bulb right here, you can think of it as a bottle. And so anytime you, you warm a bottle up by you know, putting heat on it, it's going to increase the pressure, and so if you increase the pressure downwards, it's going to allow more liquid through the thermostatic expansion valve. So that's how it works. And so right here, on this suction line of the evaporator coil, you have your external equalizer mounted and your bulb mounted, so your bulb is sensing the temperature of the refrigerant traveling through this line right here. It's converting the temperature to pressure at the head, whereas this is a pure pressure measurement pushing upwards, and the temperature on the vapor line converted to pressure will always be higher than the actual pressure measured in the vapor line as long as there's superheat present at the evaporator coil. And if you don't know what superheat is, it's the temperature increase of the vapor refrigerant within the coil. So we have other videos on that that you can find in the description section below. So our thermostatic expansion valve, TXV, has high pressure liquid entering and low pressure liquid exiting. And basically it's going to have like a flash gas coming out as well, so it's going to be primarily 80% liquid, 20% flash gas, it's then going to enter into these distributor tubes and go into the evaporator coil. And so then after the refrigerant goes through the evaporator coil and absorbs heat from the air crossing the coil, it's then going to measure the pressure of the vapor exiting the coil. And you're also going to have a temperature measurement of the refrigerant exiting the coil. So right here we're measuring a pressure on the external equalizer of 72.8 psi. And so that's just nitrogen pressure that we added into here, and I have it locked into the line with the external equalizer, and we're measuring it with a digital gauge. And so this pressure will be the average pressure for an R22 TXV, because if we look at a PT chart, and this is our quick reference cards that we have, and so R22 pressure, R4 to 9 pressure, and this is your temperature in Fahrenheit. So if we were to look at, say, 57.5 PSI, over to 87.3 PSI, that will be the range of the vapor pressure on an air conditioning system. And so we're right in the middle, right at about 73 PSI. So that will be, say, 43 degrees saturated temperature at about 73 PSI. Now the bulb right here is going to measure, say, a, a, a temperature, maybe it's going to be 54 degrees. So if this bulb's at 54 degrees, and you look at the pressure that's going to be applied to the head of the TXV, you're at 90.8. And so you got 73 
for your external equalizer and then say 91 and so you have 18 psi exerted by the spring and what happens is this spring pressure might be less so it might have less pressure beforehand but basically as you apply more force downwards the spring gets compressed and exerts more force but basically the opening on the inside of the TXV is able to be larger, allowing more liquid refrigerant through. But remember, this is a metering device. It's a pressure reduction device. It's gonna lower the pressure of the liquid refrigerant to allow it to be low pressure liquid and flash gas. And so once it enters into the evaporator coil, there's room to expand. And once the refrigerant is expanding and it's boiling, it's absorbing heat in the coil. Now, if this was an R4 to A TXV, and you had a range of say, maybe 101 PSI over to about 148 PSI, say the average vapor pressure on the external equalizer is gonna be probably about 122.8. And so if the bulb is sensing a temperature of maybe say 56 degrees, then basically you're gonna have 158.8 minus 122.8, and so the spring pressure is gonna be at about 36. PSI pushing upwards. And so I'm throwing these calculations out because I'm saying 42 degrees saturated temperature in the middle of the evaporator coil. And then you have 56 degree vapor exiting the evaporator coil. And so that would give you say a superheat of 14 degrees. And so the job of the TXV is to hold a superheat of say maybe eight to 14 degrees of superheat across that coil. And it does that with these three pressures. P1 equals P2 plus P3. So what I used to struggle with with these balance port TXVs with this single pin in the middle is how does P1 equals P2 plus P3 change the opening size if they always equal each other? And the thing is, this spring, as it gets compressed, it's allowing this pin to lower and allow more refrigerant through, but it's also then exerting more force upwards as it's getting compressed which is able to hold the opening size in position, like in equilibrium, but the amount of refrigerant going through is gonna be greater. So this here is a piston chamber, and when you remove a piston, you can actually have this accept a TXV, so this specific type can get mounted in here. And so right here you see we have two pistons, and these are dramatically different in size, and I'm gonna show you the water stream uh, difference between these two. Uh, but they're just not gonna have as much control as a thermostatic expansion valve would. And so this can just go right into the piston chamber and this just gets mounted right to it. So let's take you out and show you what this looks like. So with our piston size number 59, it's more limited in the amount of liquid traveling through. But then you can see we're gonna change out the piston and we're gonna put in an 84 size and that has a larger hole on the inside and that's going to allow for a larger amount of volume of liquid traveling through the piston metering device. So a fixed hole size from these pistons is not going to change the amount of refrigerant flowing into the coil based on the heat load, but if you have a higher pressure of liquid refrigerant entering it, it's going to allow more refrigerant in. There's less control with a piston, whereas with a TXV, it's always going to allow an efficient amount of refrigerant into the indoor coil to absorb that heat from the air. If you wanna learn more about superheat, the thermostatic expansion valve and refrigerant charging, make sure to check the resources we have down in the description section below. And also make sure to check out our articles and our books over at acservicetech.com. And we have other resources there such as quizzes and calculators and other resources for HVAC techs. Also make sure to check out our new inverter mini split operation and service procedures book. So that's available at our website at acservicetech.com and also on Amazon. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.